sites, we focus on the intersection of art and science. And I generally write about food and drink science for the blog, which is why I'm always happy to come here to Convergence and mix a little something up for wonderful people like you. So tonight, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the science of bubbles, and then let you taste a cocktail with some edible bubbles. Does that sound good? Yeah! Awesome. So again, thank you for coming to the room where you have to learn something before you get a drink. <laughs> um, so let's start with something I think you probably already know. I think everyone in this room probably can tell me the chemical formula for water. monoxide. Excellent. Uh, H2O, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Can everyone picture what a water molecule looks like? It's sort of like a Mickey Mouse head, right? Where you have the, the face is the oxygen atom and then the ears are the two hydrogen atoms. Yeah, so... Um, it turns out that the uh, electrons in the hydrogen atoms sort of hang out towards the bottom of those ears, towards the oxygen atom, which means that the edges of them are positively charged. Going back to chemistry a little bit, right? Uh, the oxygen atom has eight electrons, and they also hang out sort of at the bottom of it, so they're away from the hydrogen atoms, and it means that the, the edge of the oxygen atom is negatively charged. So you've got this molecule that has a positive charge on one end and a negative charge on the other end, all right? And so when they're all floating around together, you know what's happening? Right? They're attracting one another, they're pulling together, but because they've got them happening on both sides, they're tug of war going on inside of a volume of water. Everywhere except for up at the top. Because at the surface of the water, there's nothing, there are no water, more water molecules on top to be pulling up, right? So instead, everything at the top of the water just gets pulled down. And this is what we create surface tension, which is one of the key ingredients in creating the structure of a bubble. Yeah, so, and if you've ever like poured a glass of water all the way up to the top of a glass very carefully, and instead of spilling over, it creates what's called a meniscus, that curved part over the top. That's what's going on there. There are those, uh, you know, those molecules at the edge being pulled down instead of spilling over. So that's the first thing we need for a bubble. Um, and what shape is a bubble? The sphere. The sphere, right? A round sphere. Um, and there's a very specific reason for that and why we don't see bubbles of all sorts of different shapes. Um, you can think of a bubble sort of like a balloon, right? Where there's this thin skin surrounding a volume of air. And when you have a rubber balloon and it deflates, it just goes flat, right? Um, but a bubble, on the other hand, uh, continues to stay stretchy no matter the volume of air inside. It's always going to try to shrink down to um, the smallest surface area possible that it can use to contain the air inside of it. And it turns out that a sphere is the geometric shape that allows it to minimize that surface area the best. So that's why you get spherical bubbles. And no other shapes. Um, and when bubbles come together, they don't just sort of bounce off of each other, right? They merge. And that's sort of for the same reason that they're trying to minimize that surface area. If you think about, you know, if they were just next to each other, they'd each have a wall right there. But by merging and then sharing a wall, they end up with a smaller surface area. Um, and when they come together, maybe some of you can sort of see in my bowl, um, they always come together at 120 degree angles. And this means that when you have a bunch together, they form hexagons because that's what's going to allow that to, to maximize, right? Um, and uh, not to do with bubbles, but sort of the same principle as what you see in beehives, in honeycomb, right? They're hexagonal cells. That's because the bees are trying to work very efficiently and use the smallest amount of wax possible, and it turns out that the hexagonal shape is what's going to allow them to build the fewest walls. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what happens when you blow from a straw like just into a cup of water? You see the bubbles form, but they don't stick around, right? They just implode immediately. Um, and that is because the surface tension in water is too high for them to stick around. It's just always pulling in, and so they can't stay. They can't be stable. Um, but there are ways that we can create stable bubbles. You guys are probably all familiar with soap bubbles, right? Um, and what's happening there is that the soap molecules actually uh, help to lower the surface tension in the water. Uh, so soap molecules are chains of hydrogen and carbon, and it turns out that <laughs> one... <laughs> Let's do the We're flexible here in the sketch. Uh, so, so we have chains of hydrogen and carbon.
hydrocarbon, um, and one end of that chain really loves water, we call it hydrophilic, but the other end hates water, it shuns it, wants to get away from it, we call it hydrophobic. Instead, it's attracted to grease, that's why soap works, to clean things, right? Um, but what that means is that when you have a soapy solution, the, um, those hydrophobic ends of the chains are going to try to escape from the mixture, and they're going to squirm up toward the surface, and in doing so, they're pushing apart those water molecules, which is loosening the surface tension. And so the bubbles get to stay, maintain their shape for a little bit longer. So um, I hope that you learned something new about bubbles. I hope that was interesting. Um, I didn't promise just to tell you about bubbles, though. The sign does say that they will be delicious. Soap bubbles? are not delicious, <laughs> um, but we have something else for you. Uh, so in this bowl here uh, is cranberry juice with two extra ingredients. One is something called VersaWhip, which is a modified soy protein that in this case acts to lower that surface tension by coating those molecules. Um, and then xanthan gum, which is a thickener, and it just helps to make the skin of the bubbles a little thicker and less likely to pop. So I'm serving these cranberry bubbles on top of a simple cranberry vodka cocktail. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed all of this. So again, my name is Ann Sauer. I write for MathArtLab.com. And we have salons going on all day during the day in the Skeptic Space Lab. Um, you can find schedules of what's going on over there. We have many panels. I'm on a panel tomorrow night at 10 p.m. called Things I Licked for Science. I highly encourage everyone to come to. I'm also giving a uh, sandbox workshop on Saturday at 5 on molecular gastronomy. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, we need a volunteer checking IDs.